The other day a quilter sent in instructions for making a jeans quilt and this was kind of an interesting sort of jeans quilt. Most quilts I've seen made out of jeans are rag quilts where you just take the jean material, cut it into squares, sew them together and then fringe the seams so that you have a rag type quilt. This one was made out of circles and it uses both jeans and material from shirts or skirts or aprons or any other kind of scrap material in the center. Ultimately it looks like a cathedral windows and the good news is you can do the entire thing on your sewing machine. So it goes together quickly. You can put batting in it or not, um, but it's easy to sew. So I thought I would show you today. I'm not going to sew the entire quilt together but I'll show you how to sew a few of the patches together so that you can uh, make this kind of a quilt. So let's go over to the cutting table. A friend of mine gave me this giant box full of squares that had been cut from jeans and they're all different kinds of shapes so I thought this would be perfect for this particular project where I can cut them into circles. The first thing I needed to do was decide what size circle I wanted to make and, and then cut them. This little tool, this OmniArc uh, tool, is the easiest way I know to get a perfect kind of a circle. You can use it to cut, but I think cutting jeans out of this, using this uh, template is going to be too difficult. So what I'm going to do is use the template to mark the jeans fabric and I'll cut it with the scissors. So the first thing I need to do is fold it into quarters and I'm not going to pay too much attention to the straight grain and cross grain of the fabric. I'm just folding it. And then I need to put my ruler on top and the way this is going to work is that my folded edges are going to go into this corner here and then I'm going to mark on the outside. And because this square is pretty much the same size as the edge here on both sides. All I can do is mark in the center, just the curve, and then I can kind of uh, straighten it up with my scissors. So I have this little mechanical chalk that I really like, and it turns out that it just barely, it just fits into the curve of this Omni arc, which is pretty convenient. So I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to push fairly hard, and then I can just put this down into the slot and mark it. When I lift it up I've got the white chalk which I can easily see and then I just pick up my piece here and curve it around. The next thing I need to do is figure out what size square can fit on the inside of this circle. You can have any size square inside that you want. I mean you could make this shorter if you want but the idea is to get your corners, the corner of your square, so that it's right at the edge of the circle. And so fortunately I have a four inch square here. The other way to mark this is to take my ruler, line it up, and then use a black pencil, which will probably be a little bit better. A little darker. So once I have all my circles marked, then I'm going to start looking at this fabric. So the first thing I want to do with my fabric here is make sure that I've got some kind of a square corner. So I'm just going to take this ruler, I could take really any ruler, and just trim off the edge of this, uh, this piece of pile of fabric. This is actually four pieces and I'm just going to trim it off so that it's even. And I'm going to trim off this side as well so that I have two even sides. Now that I've got the two sides of this fabric squared off, I can take my square, put it, line it up with the, with the two sides that I've just squared off, and then trim the rest of this fabric. And then I've got these pieces which will fit inside the circle. Now that I have the squares cut and the circles cut and marked, I'm ready to sew them together. So I've got them right sides together, and I'm just going to stitch straight down. Now I've got the first pair and I'm just going to add the second pair on just like regular chain stitching. 
and there is going to be overlap here, so we're going to have to pick up the presser foot and help guide this through, but you just keep adding them. Now you can sew however many of these want you want together, but I'm just going to sew these two together and open them up so that the, the um, wrong sides are facing up. And then I'm going to fold these like together like that and line them up. And then the, the seams that I just sewed, what I want to do is avoid sewing over that seam anyway, but to help it go through the machine, I'll open it up and then stick a pin on both sides so that I can, so that these are top and bottom folded open. Now I've got these lined up and I'm just going to stitch all the way through. So I'll follow this line, which you can barely see, but um, it's that white chuck line. So I'll go down this one, cross over here where these two seams come together and sew down the next pair of circles. Now you can begin to see how this looks. I've just sewn these circles together and then open them up. So then what I do is I'm just going to take these, this piece of fabric and put it in the center here. Once you have your squares of fabric inside tucked away, then you're going to fold your jeans sides down again. And I'm going to put pins there and that will hold the fabric and the jeans in place. And then you're just going to zigzag. You're probably going to want to play around a little bit with the length of your zigzag stitch and how far the stitches are apart. What you're going to do is just uh, zigzag and I would try to make the, the right side of the stitch be cover up the raw edge of your jeans. And then when you get to the center, what I would do is you're going to is stitch down this side of the zigzag of the curve. So that way you, you don't have to worry about back stitching here. You can you'll have it all covered. You can just go straight down and and then you can come turn around and go back the other side and down the other side, securing both sides of these flaps. So half of these are done, these two are done, and then the bottom two are done. And you can see this is not perfect. This is a little bit shorter than that one. So now I'm just going to sew down the other sides, the cross sides, doing exactly the same thing. Now you're ready to add more onto the sides. And you can sew these together however you like. Um, you could do four like I did, which is pretty simple, or you could sew eight of them together, or however it works out. And just um, when you get to the edge of your quilt then, you can just fold it down and zigzag around the outside so you don't have to put any binding on it. If you wanted to, you could cut it off so that it's straight and then put a binding around the outside. But I think this would be kind of fun is just have to, and, and easy to do is just to zigzag. Keep in mind it's a jeans quilt. It's not going to be, um, it, it probably will be around for a long time. Even if the center fabric wears out, you still got the jeans fabric, so um, it's going to be very durable and pretty fun. Happy quilting!